Hello, this is going to be a Neon Goid um, on Fracture. Um, yeah, we're going to start with Defense, I think. Um, we're probably going to look at like a few different mechanics for, for Neon um, throughout the Goid um, when they become important to the character, but we'll just start with Defense now. Um, so the first place I usually play, I basically always play this on Defense, is uh, A Main, and because the other areas for Defense um, aren't particularly great for Neon. They're not bad, but they're not great. Um, the other the other option mainly is Arcade um, over here, but I personally wouldn't do it, uh, at least very often, because of what you're doing there is fairly hard to pull off or a bit riskier, generally, than just playing Main. So when you're playing A Main, you basically want to be playing with... Usually you'll have a Breach. Neon and Breach have really good synergy together, so... You want to be using um, your stun as an extension of the breach stun, whenever you have a breach. Um, so whenever you have a breach, he's really going to stun this. Um, and what you can do, you have two options. You can either stun before his stun. However, I think that, that's actually worse to do. The other option is when he stuns, you're going to be running up like this. And then you can stun like this and it'll extend the stun. It'll also hit people in this corner. Um, so... If he doesn't stun this corner, he just stuns this straight line. There's going to be like two, maybe one or two people in this corner and one or two people here. And what this stun does is it's going to hit, going to hit some of this area. It's also going to hit, it's also going to hit this. So it's going to hit these two areas. Um, and it will hit someone that's still stuck in the stun. And obviously here, they'll be breach stunned. So you have a bunch of like, basically free kills there. Um... Obviously, I don't do this every round. If there's no one here, um, like if my breach isn't here, anyone doesn't stun anything, then I'm gonna like want to get the orb because my my ultimate can be really really strong in in most situations, in a lot of situations, and especially with the the buffs coming up as well. Um, and then in terms of walls, there's not really great walls you can do here. Like if you are struggling, maybe you you whiffed on you're just playing this angle and you whiffed, um, and you're struggling and you want to try and get away, so you can like wall like this. No obstacle, it will stop the enemy from being able to kill you if you can run out. Um, I also think as well, if you want to play a bit more passively um, and not hold an angle, you can do the jump peek for Neon. So you can do this really, really fast on Neon. You're the fastest jump peeker in the game because of your sprint. That's basically all I got for A. Like, as soon as you come back, like you can play sort of uh, on site if you want, or you can go sand. Um, either one is fine because you have decent stuns either way. If they come out sand, you've got this stun. Um, and if they want to go sight, then you've got this stun. So, you, or if they're already out, then you can do this sort of stun. There's like defend you up top if you want, or you can be below and do the same stun. Do the same stun if I'm not stupid. There we go. Um, and it, all it does is just defends you. You can also do a stun like this. Oh, sorry, stun like this, like this. Where it's gonna stun this to these this line, so then you can sort of maybe peek right off it. So, so then there's no one on the left that's gonna kill you. Move on to drop. So on drop, um, I barely ever play drop. It's only if like maybe I've got someone that wants to peek AMA with an op like my chamber or something. Um, and sometimes in that situation I would actually go arcade, but sometimes you know maybe he doesn't have a trap this round or something. So someone does have to come dish and it'd probably be me. Um, so usually what I do is I either run up and jump peek um, because I'm going to find see if anyone's there. And I'll beat them there as well, so they can't go, they can't cross either. So, um, and then the, the, I can also do a stun if I see someone. If I feel like they're coming, if they're gonna come close to me, I, I do this stun. So that so they they um this full area is stunned, um, and this sort of like small area next to it is stunned. The only problem with this stun is that you don't get like this area, which is one of the more threatening areas at this at this peak. Um, but, but anyone that's trying to actually walk into satellite or dish or whatever you call it um, is going to get stunned and should be a free kill unless he's got friends. Unless they've got friends backing them up. Um, in terms of other stuns, like you can do stuns like this. You know, if you feel like they're going to be close, then you want to do like a jump peek with a stun. So you just feel like I think you can jump peek and stun at the same time. Take some mechanics though. Obviously. Ah, it takes some mechanics. It takes some mechanics. <clears throat> but yeah, you can do it. It is possible. Um, definitely takes some practice. I don't play Neon nearly as much to, to do it consistently, as you could, as you just saw. Um, we'll move on. Um, you, can, you can play here, but I recommend don't play here, because 
I mean, you, you, if you want to play here, you, the odds are you're going to have people with you. You're going to have like a Breach or a KO with you. Um, at which point you might as well just play here because that way you don't, like, you get such a better angle. You can really start running up from here. Overall, like, you don't really play here. It's a bit awkward as well because the person that, like, supporting you would have to pick the same angle. Um, so you would probably kind of be, like, one by one kind of trading instead of, like, playing at different angles. The next place we'll go is Arcade. Um, so on Arcade, they like... There's like one good stun basically, it's this one. Um, and pretty much you can fire it from here. Or you can fire it close. Depending on if you want to run it the bar how you run it the barrier. So if you want to just run it the barrier like this. And apparently miss. If you want to run it the barrier like this. Then you can slide in. You see it just about does hit that as well. It doesn't look like it, but it actually does. There you go, it actually does. Um, hit all of that as well, even on the box. Um, actually, not not on this big box, but it does hit on this box. Um, and then um, you have two options with this one. You saw the first one that I did was slide in and try and get a kill. The other option you have is um, pretty much requires you to do this one. So you want to fire it from this. Okay, you know, press my buttons. Um, you want to start this, and then you want to start running here. And you should be able to get into there just about before they can like re-peek you. Just get getting stuck on no fuel is kinda sad. So like this should get you under fast. And then obviously they'll hear it, that's the thing, right? So Um if, if these people are are like hearing you, then if they say that to your team, then you're in a bit of a bad spot. That's why I mean that's why I say it's risky to do this. Then we move on to B main. Um So I would recommend playing this area the least out of four areas to play on defense. There's like two good stuns. There's this one, um, which stuns this corner. Um, still leaves this part open, um, but it forces them to kind of run forward into your crosshair. And the only problem is like you, you're very far out when you're you, when you're um, when you're firing it, so you can't really. Like you're basically already taking a fight, so you want to kind of like jump peek it to do it. There's also this stun which is safer, um, but it's just a worse stun overall, it doesn't stun anyone in this corner, they can still walk up on you. Um, so it's not really that great of a stun. Um, so you, you know, there's too many angles to watch because they can already be close running to you. By the point, by that point. Um, so I wouldn't recommend playing B main because there's just not great stuns. If you want to play defensive on B main, you can, you can, you can use stuff like fast lanes to smoke them off a bit longer if you have like, if your smokes go down or die. Um, you can also play um, Terra pretty well. You know you've got two, you got some good stuns off this wall that you can do. Uh, like stun all of the site. You can also do him like this as well, so it stuns all the back site. You can just do it like this too. You need to be careful didn't stun you through the wall though. Um, maybe if you do it really low, you can do it like this. Yeah, and it's just done like a like a kind of square. That's kind of like the idea you want with. Um, with the uh, neon stuns and that kind of moves on nicely to going on to attack and swap teams um, I'm gonna mainly talk about um, A main so there's two mechanics that I main you may have seen them both just I mean I did mention it very briefly just um, so the f but the first one is one that I've been doing like a couple times um, is the jump peak um, but they want to combine this with the with the stun um, a lot of the time okay once again don't play as much neon as I should to get this right every time but essentially you want to do this, so then it's, um, um, so then you don't really die to taking this, uh, to, to like, use this stun. Um, and you still check the area. It's very, also very good on defense as well. Um, I think I did mention it, where, you know, build picked up. Um, but do you really want the stun to bounce off this window? Um, because the, the reason why is because it's a nice big flat surface. It's very easy to control where the bounce is. Um, because there's a little lip here where you can see where it all bounces up into the back into the window. And you don't want this stun. Um, you also don't want it too low. If it's too low, it won't get enough of what you want. Because a lot of people, when they see when they see the breach stun and the neon stun come in, they're going to hug this wall because it's the, one of the safer walls. Personally, I don't do it, but that's mainly because I probably play characters like Jet, um, Chamber, Rays, Neon in these areas. So I don't particularly get caught because I have ways out. Um, but when I see other people play it, sometimes I have a K on my team and the chamber's getting like knifed, and so he just dies for free essentially. Um, 
you don't you don't you don't want to you want to make sure that you're stunning them and this is kind of means that it's kind of an extension to a breach ult so a breach stun sorry so a breach stun might come in and sort of like hit like this so you've got like this kind of square going on um from like this angle or this angle uh, i can't ping again but you can see where my ping is this bit here um so you kind of want to be an extension of his stun so you can see where mine are mine like kind of extends this like square he's got into like this corner and into like this kind of area here um so you want to kind of make sure like you're like extending his stun because at this point the only option that this person has maybe is to stand here or teleport away or dash away or whatever um and if they have to stand here then they are dead they are just dead especially because if they follow if we follow up with the, with the flash here they're just gone they're gonna die very early in the round um i also um can also combine this if, if i know they have an op um, and they play like very very aggressive with the ops so my chamber so the enemy chamber is gonna look for like um he's gonna be looking for um a free kill like not a free kill but a kill while stunned or, or something like or, or like he's gonna try and dodge a stun wait out a stun and then tp back trying to be really aggressive then i might end up doing this fast lane so this fast lane um will go through this um little gap in the window um actually it doesn't quite do that it makes not much sense why this happens but I think it is to, due to this gap. I think it does make sense, um, um, at least with the way Fastlane works with other maps and things. Um, so then it will also, so it will actually wall off um, a main operator. So I would start running here, and then I would stun this, and then I can dash through. Just need to be careful, like they can sit on this line, but that's why the stun is, is so good because they can't sit on that line anymore. Um, they can technically sit there, but that's fine. But that, that, this part is very, very easy to get rid of. Like, if you have an aftershock from breach or flashes from anyone that have flashes, you can get rid of someone in that area. The second mechanic I was talking about was the extending of a, of a stun, right? Um, and part of that as well is to make sure that you kind of use your stun in squares. So, what I mean by that, so when you get to this point and you're attacking, you want to kind of be using your stun that make kind of like loose squares. I, I know this kind of sounds weird because it's a two massive circles but if you look on the map sorry i don't do better than that um so if you it's kind of needs a wall as well so you can kind of see on the map not sure if i'll zoom in for this or not you can see on the map like i'm like sort of connecting the circles fairly closely that they can like kind of be in kind of like a rectangle um if you like draw a line around them right if you like draw like a, you can draw like a rectangle around them um that's kind of where you want your stuns to be because it makes it very hard for the enemy to um, react to them. Um, it can make it very, very hard for them to maneuver themselves in the area because they are basically surrounded by a stun on maybe on one side or all sides and they have to kind of either get stunned or go into a bad spot. Um, so that's kind of how you want it. And, you know, generally I will throw this um, exact stun. So I think I actually do do it like that. So I actually don't do it particularly great. Um, you can do it better than that if you like do it like that. Yeah, there you go. You do stuns like this. You can also do fast lanes like this. And stun sight. Okay, time it better than me, but you can do it. Um, you want to have the ability to swing off the smoke, swing out the smoke, or slide out the smoke. You don't want to have like the. You want to do it like this, where they have an opportunity to kind of have the edge of edge of your fast lane to then peek like this, because your fast lane doesn't really do anything. So you don't want to use it like that. You want to use it not like that. You want to use it. Uh, kind of like this, you know, so it ends up on a wall like this and then you can start to swing out Get kills like that or you know, you don't have to slide. You don't have to slide. You can just simply swing like a stun or something I think someone's in that corner. There you go. Free kill maybe um, That's kind of like how you would attack sort of a site if you want to go through Door then there's um, a stun you can do like this where it'll bounce off this and then hit close um, if, if you'd ever breach stunning this you can probably save this stun um, if you have a breach like, that will flash through there and um, you can probably save that stun, save the stun but um and then you can like save it for maybe something like this where you can like go up the rope and uh deal some damage to the enemy team uh rotating or something or this could be smoked um and then i wouldn't recommend always going up here sometimes you can um i did not mean to press that um but that's fine um as long as you can, but usually I'll recommend coming this way and like stunning for your team to get out a uh, main. You can do a stun like this off this wall, very, very, like, like yeah, very, very close to like the edge. So it just a bit bounce off that wall. 
Because if you do it on that wall, it just obviously doesn't do anywhere near as much. You can also do it high as well. Um, just basically the same thing high. Because it will stun both sides, both up and... It will stun, like, through walls. This thing will. Or, like, through floors, I mean. Okay, that's a lob with a lip I didn't know existed. But, so we always do it right on the corner. So you want to just do any sort of, like... Any sort of, the, like, those kind of variations of stuns. Um, and then we move on to dish. Especially if you have a teammate with you that's also running left. You can do this stun, and if there's anyone dish, they're just they're going to die basically. Um, if there's a, if there's a trap here as well, you hear the trap. You can fast lane, um, try and get out fast lane like this because this fast lane is good for getting out too. You just need to be fast. Um, so so say if like your team's coming at main, you can wait for them to, to sort of get to this position or the, this kind of point, um, and then you can fast lane, to dodge the trap, um, and then you can sort of get out with a slide or something, or get it with a stun like this so this stun will stun anyone playing this area or in this area you want to do a bit high as well a bit high because then it will get to the team you want to do a stun like this um and it will just stop people from like peeking you from this position if you want if you're concerned about um rope you can do this but bear in mind it is slow because you are stunning this area so you won't be out as fast as you think without getting stunned you won't be out as fast as you want to be Okay, also you can apparently fail it a lot. Um, but yeah, you, you, that will actually stun up here as well. Um, so don't, don't be con too concerned if it goes too far down. Um, it should stun that as well. If they've changed it, I don't think so. But there you go. That, that will stun the uh, rope. Um, it's not the greatest, but they will have to dodge to the side. So when the stun lands like this, they will have to be at this point to dodge the stun. Um, and at which point like you should be able to get out. You should be able to get out despite um, this being stunned, right? Um, and then obviously you can use if if um, you didn't have to use it on a trap, you can use your fast lane similar like this, um, or like this. Or on the right side of this doorway is probably the best, or at the doorway is also good. I also said this one, so yeah, that's all of this done. Um, you want to be getting orbs where possible as well because your your ult is really valuable. Um, we're gonna do arcade next. So personally, I don't like attacking through arcade as neon. Um, because you can't really make use of your speed because you're basically very, very... Like, people can hear you from, like, uh, CT, they can hear you from here, 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 they can hear you from basically everywhere. Um, so you've got no, like, surprise factor with your stuns because there's nowhere to stun um, to get a free kill early because no one really plays like this. If they do, then, I mean, I guess you can do a stun like this or you can stun arcade like this if they play by the box. Um, if they play terror, then you can do this, but you can't really capitalize on this stun. Sometimes you can capitalize on this stun. You can't really com you can't really punish terror for being stunned. You can punish this kind of area for being stunned, but you're gonna be worried that you could get killed from here. Um, so maybe if you want to do this stun, you follow up with a fast lane, um, flying like this. And then once you're up terror, if you if you ever decide if you decide to go up terror, um, you can do there's plenty of stuns you can do like this you can do like this if you think they're gonna play close with like a shotgun or something then this is probably a better stun and um, because they might run out if they see a stun um and then obviously you've got plenty of stun options depending on where they're playing in this area because this is like perfect area for neon um you've also got ways to, to stun like this like similar to defense where you can stun most of sight you can also stun close like this and it'll go canteen um similar to the smoke the um the stun from here to here. You can also, obviously, if, if this is all clear, then this is a much more valuable stun because it gets two areas, makes it a square. So you're talking about the, you know, the square stuns. You want to be trying to get like that sort of area. Um, fold with stuns, same with here, you know. You can get some really good stuns. You can have a lot of influence in this area. So if you still have a fast lane, you can use it here like this. And because of the way it works, there's going to be smoke here too. Um, for some reason, like, there's like, I think it must be this that exposes uh, canteens. You can do it like this, and then you can also isolate. Um, I'm not bad. You can also isolate someone here. There's um, anyone there. So you. Um, oh, this better than me. But you want to be probably already sprinting. I'm just trying to say my sprint. I don't know why, because I, I need to show off. But there you go. At this point. This guy in the corner is dead if they're, if they're there. You can also swing this if um, if uh, you want to. So do something like this. I'm going to stun the majority of this area. B main is probably one of the better areas. I think the best two areas for, for, 
with Neon yeah. is the two mains. Um, especially yeah. A main. And I think this area is good for attack, mainly yeah. because of this area, these kind of areas here, at B site and B main, more so than tree. Um, and these two areas are kind of okay for Neon. They're not the best, but they're not the worst. Like, there's definitely um, some better options than Arcade. Dish is fine, but not great. And these two places are the best two places to go through. Um, so right at the start of the, of the round, you can do a stun like this. And it'll stop people from playing this angle. You also aim at the stairs, like downwards, like this, and you'll stun kind of like a very condensed, um, condensed kind of square. So the, the main way you're going to like attack B main um, is you want to use this glass again. So, so the glass is pretty nice on Neon for bouncing her stuns consistently. This stun is probably the most popular stun you'll ever see. You'll see. So what it does, the main thing it does is it's going to stun some of Terra. And it's also going to stun Snacks is what lots of people call it. Or Default is also one of the ones that people call it. People call this die sometimes. So you want to stun like this and you want to have a fast lane. So you don't want to stun. So you want to fa fast lane first and then you want to stun. And then you can slide. Okay, you, you can definitely slide past it. I'm just out in the old barrel mechanically. So you want to stun like this. Here you go. Then you can kill anyone there. There also could be someone in this position, so you want to be wary of that too. Generally, you might have, you're going to have like some support here, so you might have a flash coming through this. That's usually what happens, so you want to have a breach flash. And that's going to still go through this wall and, and uh, hit this. So it's going to it's going to lightly flash anyone here, but this is going to be your main subject of, of attacking. They're going to be stunned, um, and then anyone here should be flashed by a breach flash. Um, and then I don't think there's very many ways that you want to be mixing up with neon in in the going B. Um, so if there's someone okay that want to go through this, then they have like your KO wants to walk up here. You can put up this wall, then we can get like a, a right like a right click flash. Or a breach flash can go through this, and you can start pushing into um, into like the, these sort of areas. Um, you do have a good stun like this, and you can go a bit deeper and do a different stun like this. That so will get this corner. It's also off this glass. I think it's glass. Garage. Garage thing. It's glass actually. Actually, it's like glass. Relevant, but there you go. Um, flat surface anyway. The vents are stun off. Will stop people from walking up on you on canteen. Um, so if you want to do this sort of uh, thing, you can do this. Also, a good place to get to with this um, with this smoke um, is to sort of slip into this sort of area and walk up um, and sit in this position because this position is barely ever checked. Um, it's one of the probably the least checked positions in Valorant um, when it comes to like retaking the site. I bet there's barely anyone. I barely ever see anyone expect this position um, to be to be uh, to have someone in so I, I recommend like if you can get to this area it's actually really good as well with like champs like neon or chamber or, or jet because as soon as you get one kill or you can let one pass kill the second one kill the first one get out if you can get out in some sort of way then it's really good especially if you still have like your fast lane and you can maybe get the first kill fast lane and try and get out this way and try and maybe fight someone that's coming out of canteen that's going to be the end of the video if you want to see more then uh, you can uh, subscribe and i'll Hopefully have some more out. Um, so hopefully this helps people climb uh, on Neon, on Fracture. Some of the mechanics such as um, the jump, the like fast jump peak and using it with a stun. How to use stuns with like the square. Um, you, that's hopefully going to be helpful to Neon players in other maps as well. Um, to apply to those maps. Um, so yeah. Um, thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.